What's up guys, it's Sydney and this is your 10 minute full body foam rolling routine. So grab your roller and let's go. What's up guys, I'm so excited that you're here for our foam roller stretch today. I know I've asked you guys, you know, what are you looking for in terms of stretching? And I've had some people reach out and say they want a little bit more instruction on the foam roller or different ways to use a foam roller. So we're gonna do that today and I've got two different options for the foam roller. I'll tell you about those in a second, but I wanted to let you know that this coming week, I'm gonna be releasing a video with the lacrosse balls as well. I wanna dive a little bit more into the recovery and mobility aspect of your body. So if you have a type of lacrosse ball or a peanut lacrosse ball where they're binded together, bound together, binded, bound, together. Um, grab those. I'm going to hit that this week, okay? And then uh, we'll dive a little bit more into how to get the knots out of specific areas of your body where maybe the foam roller won't reach, okay? So I'm going to put these away, but just know this coming week, grab your lacrosse ball, baseball, golf ball, tennis ball, softball, something like that that's rounded that'll fit kind of around the joints and the muscles in your body like hip flexors, shoulder blades, something like that, okay? So you can look forward to that. I'm going to set these to the side and roll them over there. All right, so two different types of foam rollers. Today I'm gonna be using the trigger point, um, the plastic lined trigger point. As you can hear, it's harder inside. It's got the foam top. So if you're a little more advanced in your foam rolling journey, um, grab one that has the plastic lining inside. If you're not ready for that, two things about this foam roller, the inside is actually foam and it's soft all the way through. So there's a lot more give in the foam roller and it's shorter. So it can, number one, travel well, and number two, you're gonna probably have to isolate one leg at a time or one side of your glute at a time. Um, it's not as long, so you won't be able to spread your legs out, mostly one leg at a time or uh, one glute at a time. So two things about that, the length is different and what it's made up inside is different, okay? So if you need the softer one, I'm gonna link both of these below. Just two different options, always different options for the recovery and mobility equipment. But let's go ahead and get started. I just wanna make you guys aware of what you can grab if you don't have one now, okay? All right, so let's get to work. We're gonna start down on the ground. Go ahead and sit right in front of your foam roller. Okay, and I want you to put your hands behind it. Lift your hips up and you're gonna place your glutes on top. Okay, we're gonna roll back and forth with your glutes. Okay, and go ahead, use your heels and your hands to kind of glide your glutes right over top of the foam roller. I know you guys told me this week your butt and your legs were hurting. We did two different workouts for the legs this week, a burnout workout, which was tough. I did it on the beach, it was hot, and also my legs were on fire, so. <laughs> That was tough, and then we also did another leg workout prior to that one in the week. And I know you guys said your legs were sore, so we're gonna work the legs and the glutes out really good today on the foam roller. All right, go ahead and stop directly on top of your foam roller, and I want you to angle your hips over to the side. Okay, so you're gonna hit that glute medius up top, the top part of your butt. Okay, by angling one knee over and you're hitting right on the side. I'm on my right side right now. There we go. And always have a hand back here to support and your feet are supporting down at the end to push you, roll you. As always throughout the day today, if you find a spot that's particularly sore, I want you to just hang out there, okay? Just kind of sit on it. You'll feel it start to release some heat. There's probably a lot of energy in that knot, okay? If it starts getting hot, starts shaking a little bit, that's okay, just hold on. Okay, hold for about 30 seconds and then start to roll back over that area, okay? All right, let's go ahead and angle over to the other hip. All right, you can do whatever feels comfortable for you as far as your feet. If you wanna lay one leg flat, if you wanna lay one leg over top the other, that's fine too. Just make sure you're up on the top part of your glute here, this glute medius, and down into the glute max in the lower butt too. Not onto your hip yet, just still staying on the glutes. There you go. Sometimes we neglect the glute medius. It's kind of a hard area to hit if you're just stretching like a static stretch. So the foam roller does a really great job of really digging into the muscle that you sit on top of it, right? 
one side may be more sore than the other, like me. <laughs> this side's feeling it a little bit more. And rest. Okay, good. Now I want you to lift your hips up again and go ahead and push that foam roller down to your hamstrings, okay? So legs are out straight, they're not gonna be touching the ground. Hands are back, back here to support you. You're gonna lift your hips up and push from your tailbone to right above your knees. Make sure you're not crossing your joints. Okay, I don't want any joint uh, rollovers. It runs into a dangerous area when you get to your knees and your hips. Okay, kind of play with the angle of your toes. Point them out. Get a little bit more of the lateral side of your hamstring. And point them in towards each other. Get a little bit more internal, a little bit of adductor action. Good job. Find a spot if you have one that's super sore. Hang out right there for the next 15 seconds with me. Mine is a little bit lower, more towards my knee, a more distal part of my hamstring. There you go, just hang out right there. Another good way to add some pressure is to cross one leg over the other. So if you have the shorter foam roller, that's an option for you. Or if you have a longer one and just want to put a little bit more weight, a little more pressure on your leg onto that foam roller, cross one leg over. And then also still play with the angle of your foot. So open it up to the side, roll internally. Good, all right. And let's head on down to the calves. We're gonna work the posterior chain here first. So the glutes, hamstrings, calves, back part of your body first. Okay, so go ahead and put your calves on top. Start in the middle of your muscle. All the time, always start in the middle. Take your hands, lift your hips up, and this is gonna be a smaller range of motion. Okay, so think of your hips, push them away, and slide them back. And if you need a modification, you can kind of dip down at the end, lift, pull back, dip down. There you go. Trust your arms, trust your triceps. I'm gonna go ahead and cross one leg over to get a little bit more pressure on my calves. Good job. And if you're going with me, go ahead and switch legs, cross over, push and pull. You wanna try to go in the direction of the fibers of your muscle. So if you're looking at a muscle, just the muscle, which way does it lay in your body? Okay, so for the gastrocnemius or the calf muscle, it's laying this way. Okay, the fibers are running down your leg, so you want to foam roll in that direction. Okay, let's switch it over to a lateral side here. We're gonna go over onto a pretty painful spot for most people, the IT bands. Okay, two ways to do this. You can take your top foot off, take some of the pressure off of your leg, or you can stack your legs up if you're ready for that additional pressure. And keep rolling back and forth. Adjust the angles of your body, go towards your quad a little bit more, go back towards your hamstring a little bit more. Whew. And like I said, if you need to take some weight off, put that top leg in front. Okay, so you're not back here. You tend to roll back onto your hamstring if you throw it behind. So put it in front and then keep rolling. Whew. You guys tight there as well? <laughs> Good job. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to the other leg. Other side. Like I said, one side might be a little bit more sore than the other. For me, for some reason, my left side is a little bit more sore today than my right, which is not normal for me. Usually it tends to be kind of the side that you consider your weaker leg is a little bit more sore. Ooh, not the case for me today, but we'll go through it. Work it out, take the pressure. It's not a pressure that's gonna injure you, it's just gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, what you're doing here is releasing some tension and some knots in your fascia. So the top layer of your muscle. Ooh. Go ahead and find that spot that you feel super tender in. 
hold it there for me. Great job. If you can't find one, stack your legs up. I'm pretty sure you will. Woo. Good job. Three, two, one, and good. Come down onto your knees. Okay, let's head to the anterior part of your body. We're gonna go onto the quads and then we'll hit the hips really good. Okay, so like always, start with the middle of your muscle. So start right in the middle of the quad, drop down onto your forearms. And I want you to pull your body forwards and backwards. Think of like the plank body saw that you do. Okay, so a little bit easier. <laughs> Stay between your hips and your knees. Make sure you're not crossing over any joints. Good, now angle your toes out away from each other. Good job, use your arms to glide back and forth. This might be pretty painful. We're gonna spend a little extra time here because I know we did a really great leg workout this week, workouts this week. Now let's hit your hips for just a second. So I want you to slide over to where you're just on one hip, okay? Put your hip flexor right on top of your foam roller. The other knee is gonna be bent and out to the side, okay? I want you to just go about three inches from your hip bone to the top of your quad. There you go. You've got weight supported on your forearm on this hand here. really wanted to focus on your legs today. Okay, go ahead and slide that foam roller over to the other hip. And just give me that about three inch range of motion, okay? There you go, three, two, and one. And we're gonna finish it out with my very favorite thing to foam roll, your upper back. Okay, so sit down in front of your foam roller. I want your shoulder blades to start on top. Hands are behind your head. Go ahead and lift your hips. And let's roll from middle back to upper back. Okay, make sure you're not crossing over any joints again. Don't go up onto your neck. Don't go down to the lower back. As the clock rolls down to zero, give me about 20 more seconds here. Okay, might spend a little too much time on the hamstrings. <laughs> I love rolling my hamstrings out. Give me about 20 more seconds of just upper back and open your arms, close your arms, figure out which way feels best for you. Okay, if you feel a little bit deeper in there with your arms open, your shoulder blades will give a little bit more pressure to your rhomboids, that's fine. If you wanna close it, that's fine too, okay? Just remember to stay between your upper back and your middle back, okay? Don't go to the lower back. There's not a lot of support down there um, and you wanna keep it safe. You want this foam roller workout, this routine, to just emphasize that you're opening up that fascia, that you're giving a little bit of extra pressure to the fascia in your muscles, okay? So I'm gonna link a part two of this stretch. It's gonna be a resistance band stretch, full body resistance band stretch. I'm gonna link it right here. Okay, so when you're done there, click the link here. Make sure before you head out to click subscribe right here, and I'll see you guys in part two. Have a great day.